Stretching east from California's Golden Gate, the terrain of America rises to the level of the sea to become a far-flung area of peaks and high plateaus. These mountain barriers are among the formidable obstacles now being overcome in a spectacular communications undertaking. This is the placing of telephone circuits in cable, underground, between Sacramento and Omaha, to connect together the cable systems already serving the east and west, and thus supplement the lines already built for transcontinental speech. With the completion of this 1,500-mile underground link, there will be an all-cable telephone line clear across the entire nation. The scientific development that makes it possible to transmit speech through long cables is itself a remarkable accomplishment, but that is a separate story. Today's interest centers on the builders. Following the surveyors, the crews building westward across the prairies have driven their mechanized equipment where once the caravans of covered wagons left a trail in the virgin ground. A century of progress is in the contrast between the marks of pioneer wagon wheels and the pattern stamped by the tractor treads to show where a giant plow has slipped the earth, leaving a pair of cables 30 inches deep, each cable for one-way transmission. Enormous power has been needed to ensure the success of this important enterprise, for the total weight of the cable caravan is 100 tons. The plow behind the tractors that cuts through roots and dislodges rocks and boulders is a six-ton weight. And so is the second plow that feeds the two cables into the earth. And each of the trailers behind the ponderous plows means a dragging weight of more than four tons when loaded with its reel of heavy cable. And so the mechanical power of 400 horses has been brought to move a cable train across the western landscape and share the scene with the living horsepower of the farmlands. Such is the modern caravan that has been heading west toward the Rockies. Nebraska rivers have not halted it for long, despite the special problems they have created for the builders to overcome. Nor has the Wyoming winter made these builders pause with this challenge of frozen ground and flying snow and sub-zero temperatures and 50-mile winds. For time is short. The cable train has steadily moved on with twin cables in the earth to mark its passing. Nor has the bitter weather kept the splicers from their all-important job. The job that must be done at thousands of points along the route. The job of uniting the wires into continuous conductors and of joining the cable sections so expertly that the test of gas pumped into the joints will show no leaks where damaging moisture could enter. Heading east from California, other men have been battling to keep their rendezvous with time. To prepare the way for the cables that the coming plows would bury, these builders have met and overcome the resistance of nature in many a form.
even on the cleared and level stretches, their progress has not been easy. And after reaching the mountains, they have had jungles of forest growth to fight. A ton of steel has forced down the blade that has cut the matted roots as the path was cleared and the ground made ready for the cable caravan. So these builders have held to the course, east, over the Sierras. Their way has been through historic country, filled with memories of pioneers who braved the mountain passes, filled with memories of other pioneers who built the wire circuits that first joined America's seaboards together. It was tough going for those other transcontinental builders. It has been tough going for their successors. But the gap between the cable trains is narrowing. And when it is closed, a new chapter will be in the record books to tell how cable protection was given to transcontinental speech.